Hello, this is the Watchdog, and welcome back to Fun with Watches. If watches weren't fun, you'd only need one. Today, we're going to review the TPWK7017. Let's start with the wrist check. I'm wearing a San Martin SN0017. And Greg was wearing my Carju 2299 Amish to Tag Heuer Formula 1. I told Grogu that Mrs. Watchdog wants a trip to Hawaii, so she served some poi. Grogu asked, why is it called poi? And I said, because when you try it, you say, poi, does this stuff suck? All right, let's take a look at the watch. As you can see, it's a fairly big watch on a NATO strap. And I don't know if, I mean, the NATO strap really makes it look like a field watch. But the dial really doesn't. So, this is the second TPW on my channel. The last one was a 41 millimeter field watch that I couldn't recommend because it lacked any water resistance. This larger TPW doesn't cost much more and has at least the basic 30 meters and a much sturdier NATO strap. However, the dial is quite different and doesn't give off that field watch vibe that the other one does. Whether or not that is a deal breaker will depend on you. The watch is 43.6 millimeters if you measure at the bezel, but 46 millimeters at the case. So once again, it's a big watch. 51.5 meters lug to lug. At 16.5 millimeters thick if you count the double pass NATO strap. 14.5 millimeters if you don't. Has a 24 millimeter lug width, so it's a wide watch also. And then it weighs 87 grams on the supply NATO strap. If you look at the bezel, the bezel is pretty thin and uh, it's kind of hard to see the bezel because it matches the rest of the case so well. And they all have this matte finish. Then if you look at the dial, it says TPW on top. No mention of water resistance, but you get the basic 30 and that's it. Then you have baton indices with a 12 and 6. Normally with a field watch you get lots of numbers. This one you only get 12 and a 6. And then as you can see the second hand is missing the mark. So if you have that second hand OCD this one might set it off. And then we have skeleton hands. And there's no loom on the hands at all. And the ad says it has loom. So they're is no loom and the ad says loom that's a major gripe and groan and then the crown it's it's a big crown but the crown action is really loose and when you go to set it sometimes there's a minute hand jump sometimes there isn't it's kind of inconsistent see that one jumped pretty good but if you hold it when you press it in yeah, sometimes you still get that jump, but it's not a huge jump. Not enough to really make you angry when you go to set it and you miss by a little bit. Unlike some watches where you just get you just get furious trying to set them. And as you can see too, there is no date. And then the crystal is a flat mineral glass. You're not going to get sapphire on a watch that's cost less than ten dollars. That's for sure. And then the case is a alloy. It's not solid steel, that's for sure. And it's got this uh, matte finish all over. It's a fairly nice looking case. It kind of reminds me of a Panerai case, kind of. And I like the case. And then underneath we have the case back. And it says Japan movement. And yes, this does have a Japan movement. Then water resistant 3 ATM, which is 30 meters. And it gives the model number. Then TPW says top of the world. So I guess that's what TPW stands for. So if you're going to climb Mount Everest, so I don't recommend taking this one with you. Then once again, it does say Japanese movement. It has the SII PC21S. SII is owned by Seiko, so this is basically a Seiko design. 
Unfortunately, with the loose crown action, uh, I can't really, I'm not impressed with the Jap, the fact that it's a Japanese movement. In fact, the last watch I reviewed it had a Chinese movement of similar uh, design, and I really, you can't really tell the difference between the two other than one says TMI and one doesn't. Okay, that time I set it, it set pretty good. Then we have a double pass NATO strap. As you can see, the hardware is a little bit better than the last TPW. The last TPW I did, the hardware was really, really thin. In fact, I have it right here. I'll just show you. See, look how thin it was on the old one. And this, this larger one has much better hardware. Here's the watch and my seven and a half inch wrist. As you can see, I can just barely pull it off because this is a large watch. So if you had a wrist much smaller than seven, I don't think I could recommend this watch for you. But even though it's a pretty tall watch, it doesn't seem as tall just because it's such a big watch. And I have four notches left on this strap, so you should probably be able to wear it with if you have an eight and a half. Okay, anything bigger than eight and a half, you'll have a need a new strap. But at, this is a 24 millimeter lug width, so you'll probably have to buy one because you probably don't own one. We will not be taking a trip into the loom room because this watch has no loom, despite the fact that the AliExpress ad says it does. These are skeleton hands. There's nowhere to put any loom. And there's the white stuff on the base, but it's not loomed. What do I like about this watch? Well, I do like the case design. I think it's a pretty nice case considering the price. I like the NATO strap. It's a little bit thicker than a watch this cheap usually has. And I think it wears nice for a big watch. What are my grapes and groans? No loom when the ad says it has loomed hands. And the dial really isn't field watch style. I, when I think of a field watch, I think of a dial more like this. And it's just difficult to set the watch. It's not consistent. And a lot of times you get minute hand jump and you have to just be really careful when you're pressing the crown. Do I recommend this watch? Well, I'm kind of torn. It's a pretty good watch for under $10, but once again, you're getting no loom. And it's just, it all depends really. Do you like the style of the dial? Personally, I don't. So I don't recommend it for that reason. But if you do like the style of the dial, then go for it. It's not a horrible piece of junk. Well, thank you for watching my review of the TPW 7017. And I will be back with another review or unboxing. Be sure to like and subscribe to my channel. Bye.